Good morning, virtual church family. Sorry we're a little late starting. I've been trying to get the Zoom uh, figured out. And um, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure that everyone who is tuning in on, in on Zoom on their computers can hear me. So um, I apologize if you can't hear me. We will figure this out. Um, uh, if you can read my lips, unmute me um, and we'll do our best. So as we start today, I want to talk about something that I've seen a lot in uh, the blogs as things have been going on throughout this process. A lot of people are talking about how do we find a new way to be church? And I find that a little interesting because the truth is, is that one of the things that we clergy have been trying to communicate for years is that the building isn't the church. The fact that we're not able to meet together in person doesn't make or break the church. We are together, gathered together as we are right now. We are the church. In fact, we may be the church right now and in this moment have the potential to seize being the church really in the way that Jesus intended. You see, Jesus brought together his disciples and those original followers, they met simply in people's homes. They knew that they were all following Jesus. Their hearts were connected, even when they weren't present in person. So we have the opportunity to be the church in a more real and meaningful way, everything that it means to be the body of Christ. So let's seize upon that as we begin our worship this morning. Will you pray with me? God, as we come before you, separated by physical distance, but joined together in our hearts and in our spirits. We pray, God, that you would remind us that you are as you always are in our midst. We pray that you would be with us at worship, that you would open up our hearts and our minds, and that you would remind us of your many blessings and promises. In these moments, God, when it is so difficult to know what to do, to know what the future holds, and to know what you're leading us toward, God, show us how to be your church. Even as we gather here this morning over online medium in order to be your church, show us how we can be truly the body of Christ in our world, helping the least of these, loving you and loving our neighbor as ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture today, as we start out, is uh, the first one is from Matthew, chap uh, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. It's a familiar verse, uh, but I really want to drill down on the very last thing that Jesus says to his disciples in this scripture. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And for our second scripture today, I'm heading to the Old Testament. Sometimes when I am feeling down or having a difficult time, I love to go to the Psalms. The Psalms offer me a way to express what is in my heart when I can't find the words myself. And today, we're going to look at a very familiar and much loved Psalm, a Psalm that some people who don't even know scriptures are familiar with, the 23rd Psalm. So let us hear what David says to us in this special scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He restores my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff 
protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. What I love about this is that it offers us a reminder of God's presence. You know, in this time of social distancing, when everything is closed down, we're self-isolating and we're trying to stay away from one another to stop the spread of this, violent, of this virus. But in the midst of this, it's awfully easy to start feeling alone, isn't it? I mean, this past week I've been getting a little bit of a glimpse as to what John might have endured out on that island of Patmos as he was exiled there. Everything's closed. We can't see one another at the store or at the restaurants. We're not even gathered physically for worship this morning. And I know that at least the state of Ohio is advising people, don't go out unless absolutely necessary. And other states are on a complete and total lockdown, ordering people to remain in their homes unless absolutely necessary. And so in the midst of all of this, it is easy to feel that we're all alone and to forget the important truth that we are never alone. And that's what I wanted to remind us of this morning. Because being alone and thinking that we're all in this by ourselves can be really overwhelming. And so I think that li listening to these scriptural promises, Jesus' promise to his disciples and to all of us as we follow him, that he will be with us always even to the end of the age. Always. Not just in this time, not just in times of difficulty, not just in times when we're rejoicing. Jesus promises that he is with us always. It's an important thing to remember when we're feeling alone and isolated. The truth is we are not alone. We are never alone. And in this much beloved 23rd Psalm, David reminds us also of what he knew. This Psalm is often used at funerals and it's apt for that because it reminds us of God's presence. That's what's so comforting about this Psalm. That's why we use it. And I thought of that this week as I was thinking about the loneliness that I was beginning to experience and what we could rely upon as Christians and as people of faith to remind ourselves that God is in fact with us. David begins by reminding us of God's presence by addressing God as our shepherd. David well knew as a shepherd himself that a shepherd is always with the sheep. It's not something that you simply let them go out to pasture and then you go about your daily chores and business. No, in the Middle East, a shepherd must constantly be with his sheep because they are constantly needing to be cared for and in danger. And so the shepherd is always watching over them. And then this way, David says, this is how God cares for us. Ever pre present, ever vigilant, ever caring for us, and ever watching over to protect us. And just in case we have missed his point, David goes on to explain the different ways that God cares for us. That God leads us beside still waters and through the green valleys. In all ways, God watches out for us. God cares for us. It's so easy in times when we're having difficulty to feel as though God has abandoned us, that God is not there. Oftentimes, this is the result of us focusing on our troubles, on everything around us, rather than on God's presence. Because I promise you, God is and always will be there. God has walked with you from the moment that you first drew breath in this world. And God will be walking with you throughout that last breath and as you enter the promised land of heaven. This is what David is wanting us to know. And if you didn't think that the psalm could get any better talking about God's presence and the comfort that we can find in that, particularly in difficult times as we find ourselves now, David talks about one of the most beautiful verses, I think, in all the Bible. 
He says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I walk through the darkest valley, in the valleys, God is with us. This is what David affirms. Even though I walk through difficult times, those valleys, we would rather live on the mountaintops, but sometimes in life, we find ourselves in the valleys. But just as Elijah and Moses and Jesus himself met God on the mountaintop, God is also with us in those valleys of life. The valleys of the shadow, as David so eloquently puts it. Even there, as David affirms, God is with us. God walks with us. God cares for us. God protects us. We are never alone. This is the, imp the important promise that we can hold on to in these difficult times. God is always with us in good times and in bad times. God is with us in our homes, in our isolation, in hospital rooms, in ERs. God is with our first responders and our hospital workers. God is with all of us. He's with us in our fear, in our hopes, in our uncertainty about our futures. We are not alone. We are never alone. This is God's promise. And I got to tell you, I have looked through all of the Bible and I can't find one time when God or Jesus ever broke a promise. This is what we can stand firmly on right now. This is where we can find our hope, our promise that God is with us, that we are not alone. We are not abandoned to this virus. And there's something more. Jesus reminded us time and time again that when God is with us, nothing can stand against us. Jesus said, everything, everything is possible for God. And so the one that walks with us through that dark valley, the one that lifts us up, that protects us, that cares for us, that soothes our anxious hearts, God is not only with us, but God is for us. And because God is with us and for us, then we will make it through this. And as we all come together in God, reminding ourselves of this wonderful promise of God's presence, God's unfailing love, and God's ever faithful promises, then we can come together, support one another, and truly be the church with Christ at the head, just as he intended. So don't forget this week, divert your focus away from the news and focus on God. Remind yourself of that wonderful truth that God is with us. And I'm going to be doing my best to remind you of this as well. Beginning this afternoon, I am going to begin posting pictures of beauty, pictures of God's creation on our Facebook page and tomorrow on our website. I want us to focus on God's presence in the world using the beauty of God's creation as a reminder. And in advance, thanks to a local, very talented photographer, Seth Schaefer, for the photos that he's sending. And I encourage you, share your own pictures of hope and promise. Share your own pictures of how you find God presence, present with you in the midst of all of this, whether it's through our rescue workers, whether it's through our hospital personnel, regardless of how you find God in this moment, know that God is there and help others find God as well. Amen. I came across something that somebody posted on Facebook, and it's a story about Jane Goodall, and I wanted to share it with you as we close out our time together. Years ago, anthropologist Margaret Mead was asked by a student what she considered to be the first sign of civilization in a culture. The student expected Mead to talk about fish hooks or clay pots or grinding stones. But no, Mead said that the first sign of civilization in an ancient culture was a femur, a thigh bone, that had been broken and then healed. 
Meade explained that in the animal kingdom, if you break your leg, you die. You cannot run from danger, get to the river for a drink, or hunt for food. You are meat for prowling beasts. No animal survives a broken leg long enough for the bone to heal. A broken femur that is healed, she said, is evidence that someone has taken time to stay with the one who fell, has bound up the wound, has carried the person to safety, and has tended the person through their recovery. Helping someone else through difficulty is where civilization starts. We can help one another through this. God is with us, but that's not all. We are stronger together. And so I have an idea. Those of you who are closer to my age or older may remember that years ago, we all put yellow ribbons up to rally together. And I know that the governor of Ohio has asked people to put up flags. But I want to go one step further because I believe that because God is with us, we have hope and we have strength. We can claim the victory now, even as we claim our victory as Christians in Jesus Christ. We still live in a world with sin and with difficulties as we're going through now. But we know, even though it's not yet Easter, that we have already had the victory. And I am telling you today, mark my words, we are going to have victory. We are going to overcome this virus because with God and together, we can do any of that. And so I looked up and I want to challenge all of us to do something proactive, to share this hope and the strength that we have together. Let's all take green and make that the color. Let's wear green ribbons. Let's put green ribbons up on our homes. Let's flood our nation with green. This virus wants to go viral. Let's make the symbol of hope green go viral instead. I looked it up. Green is the color of healing, well-being, harmony, optimism, calm, and of course spring. So doesn't that seem like a perfect color, to rally behind, to let that be our victory flag, even in the midst of the battles that we continue to face. Let's put green ribbons up as a sign of our hope and our strength, as a sign of claiming the victory that we will have. I have them on order from Amazon, and as soon as they come, I will post it on our Facebook page. I will have little green ribbons taped to the front door of the church. Please feel free to stop by, pick one up, put it on, and then spread the word. Let everybody know that we are claiming our hope. We are strong together because with God and one another, there is nothing that we cannot overcome. So as we claim our victory, let us close together in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you with uncertainty and fears in our heart. And yet we are reminded through your promises, through your word, that you are with us. We are reminded that when we come together, we are stronger together. And when we come together with you, then there is nothing we cannot do. Remind our hearts in those anxious moments. Turn our attention to your presence with us. Give us a glimpse of your beauty. Show us a kind word from a stranger. In, in, imply us to call someone else and to offer a kind word for them. Let us all be part of the strength that we have in you. Let us all be part of the victory that we are already now claiming. We pray that you would calm all of our fears and our anxieties, even as we move through this troubling time together. And we pray, God, for those who are on the front lines on our behalf. We lift up to you our health care professionals, our first responders, all of those who are out there trying to make a difference. We pray that you would protect them and keep them safe, and we pray for their families that they would be safe as well. We pray for our leaders, God, as they make difficult decisions to try and guide our country and our people through these difficult times. 
And God, we pray for ourselves, because even in the midst of the concerns over the virus, you well know that we have other concerns on our hearts. We pray for those who have received devastating diagnoses, that you would be with them and remind them of your presence even in this as well. We pray for those who are dealing with chronic illnesses, regardless of what the virus may bring into our lives. We remember, God, that there are other concerns that we live with. And God, we pray for those in our military, some of whom were activated in Ohio just this week, and we pray that you would keep them safe and guard them as you watch over us and they care for us. In all ways, God, we pray your presence with us and a reminder of your love, because truly your love is the greatest, and it is in that and in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. As I sign off, one more lasting thought. Last night I, I needed to unwind. I needed to think about something other than the virus, which I highly recommend. And so I turned on uh, flipping the channels and I found Men in Black 3. And I heard a great quote from one of the minor characters. In fact, I had to stop watching the uh, show to write it down really quickly so that I could share it with you. The quote is this. A miracle is something that seems impossible, but happens anyway. Friends, when we come together as Christ's church, as we remember that God is with us and that God is for us, lifting us up, strengthening us, and empowering us to do what we may not be able to do on our own, then we will, not just we can, we will make a miracle. And so let's claim our miracle today. And until Wednesday, stay safe, be kind to one another, and God bless us all. Bye-bye.